and the most high thy power shall bless thee in the land thou uh, whither thou goest to possess. Verse 17. But if thine heart turns away so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other powers and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether you go up to possess over the Jordan. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now, I want to show you all something. <clears throat> let, me, let me see if I can get this in. Uh, so here, this is Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30, verse 19 in the Bible Hub. Okay, so I'm going to read that uh, verse 19 in the contemporary version, if y'all can see the highlight, the contemporary English version. I want you to notice how this reads. It says, now I call the sky and the earth to be a witness or to be witnesses that I am offering you this choice. Let me read that again. <clears throat> the Most High says here, now I call the sky and the earth to be witnesses that I am offering you this choice. So the Most High is giving us a choice. It continues. Will you choose the most high to make you prosperous and give you a long life? Will you choose the most high to make you prosperous and give you a long life? Or will he put you under a curse and kill you? Choose life. Now let's look at this again. Now I call the sky and the earth to be a witness or to be witnesses that I'm offering you this choice. Will you choose for the most high to make you prosperous and to give you a long life? So who's gonna make us prosperous? Who's gonna give us a long life? It's the most high. See, this is the contract or the covenant, the blessings and the curses the instructions, we follow them. And by default, by default, <clears throat> we get the extreme blessings, the extreme wealth, the extreme long life, right? The extreme peace and happiness. Or will the Most High put you under a curse and kill you? Choose life. See, the choice is ours. What we do is ours, okay? The choice we make in every second of every day, in every situation that we find ourselves in, the choice is ours to follow the Most High's instructions. But how can you follow those instructions if you don't know what those instructions are? That's the big problem, right? If you don't know what the instructions are, meaning, you either know that you are not aware or you don't know what they are, or you believe that you are following the Most High's instructions because that's what your pastor said, that's what your rabbi said, that's what your preacher said, or that's what your guru said, right? And you think that you're doing these things, but you're still under the curses, right? And nothing has changed for you for years, right? At all. But see, it doesn't matter whether you realize or whether you're aware that you are not following the Most High's instructions or not. This is a contract, right? It's a contract. And you have to remember that not only were our ancestors con in the contractual relationship with the Most High, but also their children, their seed, right, which includes us. So we don't have a choice in it. Whether we want this or we don't want it, it is what it is, and there's no way out. You cannot escape it. That's why uh, 
the scriptures say that the curses will overtake you, but also more importantly, the blessings will chase you and overtake you if, see, if you choose life, if you choose life. And I'm here to uh, help you make the decision to choose life. We're in this together as a nation, right? So choose life, follow the most high's instructions. It's easy. It's as a matter of fact, let me show you that it's easy. Don't take my word. Never take anybody's word for anything. Okay. Never take anybody's word for anything. Develop the habit of searching <clears throat> for yourself. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30. This is an NIV. Doesn't matter what version we read this in, especially if you come to our classes, uh, you'll learn how to uh, how to work with all, all the different translations, right? Doesn't matter what translation, you'll come to class, you'll learn how to deal with all translations. So Deuteronomy chapter 30, okay, so now let's go to verse 11, okay? They have this nice little subheading here, the offer of life or death. And I want to show you guys something um, after I read this. <clears throat> verse 11. So we'll start here at verse 11. Now, what I am commanding you today, not yesterday, not in the future, but today, right? That was Moses' day, is not too difficult. What I am commanding you or what I am instructing you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. All right. This is the most high himself saying that. So is the most high lying right here? Is he deceiving you? Is he deceiving all of us? When he says, now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Is the most high bringing evil on you for no reason? You haven't even been born yet. You're, you know, you were innocent when this was written, <laughs> regardless of <laughs> what you or me might have done after we're born. But in this is instance, before, you know, the, the offspring are innocent, right? So why would the most high lie? Okay, this is a contract. So of course, this is not a lie. Of course, it's not misleading. The Most High is saying it is not too difficult and it is not beyond your reach. That's you personally. Whatever your name is, it's not too difficult for you and it's not beyond your reach regardless of what your pastor, rabbi, preacher, teacher, guru has told you in the past. You see it with your own eyes, right? What I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach, okay? Then it goes on, 12. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Did y'all see that? It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it so we may obey it. Notice it says, so what? So we may obey it. So this is specifying specifically what's at issue. What's at issue here is knowing the instructions that the Most High gave us, right? That's the issue. You cannot obey them if you don't know them. Of course, right? Of course. You cannot obey them if you do not know them. So verse 12 again, it is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it so we may obey it. Okay, so in other words, that information is available to us. It is available to us. We don't need uh, some extreme event or happening to go up into the heavens, right? And then give us the most highest instructions. See, proclaim it. We don't need that. 
according to the Most High, not according to Dr. Yasapa. According to the Most High, we do not need someone to ascend into heaven and get the Most High's instructions, get his commandments, and then tell us so that we can obey them. If anybody has told you that, you now see that this is that that, that statement is a direct contradiction diction of what was told to Moses is just not true. But can you accept that? Can you accept that? That's the issue. Choose life. Verse 13. Nor is it beyond the sea. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Verse 13 again, nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us. So in other words, the information, the most highest instructions will be available to us. It will be available to us, right? Now, verse 14, notice this, 14. No, the word, that's the most highest word, his instructions, is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Isn't that interesting? If you have insight and if you have wisdom, you will know exactly what this is talking about and when it happened and when it happened. Know the Most High's instructions is very near to you very near to you. It is in your mouth, <clears throat> excuse me, and in your heart, so you may obey it. I have a question for you. Are you conscious of it? Are you aware of this? Most people are not aware of it. Most people are not aware of this. And I want everybody to think about this. What does this mean and how does it apply in your life? How can this liberate you? See, how can this liberate you? Okay, it's not for me to tell you, it's for you to ask and answer that question for yourself. Verse 15, just to continue. See, I set before you today life and prosperity. Ah, life and prosperity. Life and prosperity. Now let's go do what we do, how we do it. Deuteronomy 30, we go into the interlinear. Life and prosperity. So let's investigate this. Life and prosperity. I forgot what verse that was. Uh, hold on. Let me go back. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, verse 15. <clears throat> verse 15. So let's go down to verse 15. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not going to do an orientation on this for the sake of time. Okay, so uh, here's a word that we're looking for in the interlinear. They translated as good. This is Strong's number 2896. <clears throat> I'm going to go over these Hebraic meanings. Okay, Strong's number 2896. Uh, as an adjective, the first meaning is good, pleasant. Pleasant, agreeable, as in agreeable to the senses, pleasant to the higher nature, good, excellent, for example, of its kind. So it would be, so say you had cars, right? The Rolls Royce is the top of the line. So excellent, 1D, good, rich, valuable in estimation, 1E, good, appropriate, becoming, better, see, better comparative or in compar comparison to somebody else, for example, in comparison to the lifestyle or the life of foreigners. 1G, glad, look, glad, happy, prosperous of man's sensuous nature. 1H, good understanding, as in of man's intellectual nature. One eye, 
good, kind, benign. Benign is peace, right? Everything's good. 1J, good, right, or ethical. 2, a good thing. Benefit, welfare, welfare, prosperity, happiness. Good things. Good, benefit, moral good. Welfare, right? Meaning that your, your, your whole situation is great. Benefits, good things. Prosperity, happiness, good things, bounty, okay? <clears throat> so when we say life and, so when the Most High says life and prosperity, he means exactly that, <laughs> right? Not just life, not just a long life, but a prosperous life where you have all the good things that you want to feel. See, we saw of a sensuous nature, right? Of a sensuous nature. So that's your feeling aspect, the intellectual nature. So all aspects of your, of your mind and body will be prosperous. You'll experience abundance in everything, not just a long life, but this is why I always say extreme, the extreme good. Okay, this is what the Most High is offering us. So let's go back. <clears throat> so I set before you today life and prosperity. I want to read that again. And uh, what was that version? Because I really like the way it put it. Okay, so let's go back to the contemporary English version. I really like this. Now I call the sky and earth to be witnesses that I am offering you a choice. What's the choice? A life of a long life with extreme, <laughs> extreme uh, riches and wealth of every sort. All the desires of your flesh met, right? All of your relationships with other people, the quality, all met and at a high level of ethics and morality, right? All your intellectual uh, curiosities, so on and so forth all met, just go back and read the Hebraic meaning of Strong's uh, 20, 2896, which they translate or render as good. And the NIV rendered it as prosperous. And how does, it, how does the KJV render this? They render it as good, okay? All right, so now let's look at death. Okay, let's go back. Let's look at death, okay? So the Most High is giving us this choice, life and prosperity, or death and destruction. Notice there is no in-between, right? You know, there, there's two choices, life and prosperity, death and destruction. So now let's look how these words are. Let's look at the Hebraic meaning. Well, we know what death is. Death is what? The opposite of life, right? When you look at the meaning here, Strong's 4194, it also says dying right? It also says dying. But notice it says what? Death by violence, part of the curses. Death by violence as a penalty. What's the penalty? The penalty of not, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the, the, the penalty for not following the most highest instruction is death by violence, right? Death by violence, dying. Now, let's look at the other word. Uh, here they translate it as evil, but how does it, uh, how does it translate it in verse? Okay, destruction. So let's look at destruction. <clears throat> and KJV is translated as evil. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the interlinear is also rendered or translated as evil. Okay, now let's look at the Hebraic meaning. See, I, when you remember, uh, it's uh, the, the, the option is life and prosperity, extreme prosperity, happiness, satisfaction, or death by violence, dying, and evil. So the word translated as evil or destruction is Strong's number 7451. We'll go read it. Bad, evil, bad, disagreeable, malignant. Malignant is like a malignant cancer. You, you can't cure it, right? It's gonna keep coming back. Bad things just always coming to you, right? This is why the Most High says the curses are what? Going to pursue you until they overtake you. 1B, bad, unpleasant. So a bad life, 
an unpleasant life, right? A life full of evil where there's people giving you pain, unhappiness, misery. One C, evil, displeasing, bad of its kind, right? Be it whether land or water, bad as in a value or poor value, worse than, see, compared to other peoples or foreigners, your life is worse than theirs. In other words, you have more calamity, you have more evil in your life, right? Sad, unhappy, a sad, see, <clears throat> a lifetime is built, let's say if we use it, look at it at units of seconds, a lifetime is built on the decisions we make every second, how we feel every second of every day. So where we are right now is what? Due to an accumulation of decisions we've made and feelings that we have either allowed ourselves to feel or <clears throat> feelings that overtook us and we couldn't control it. All of that stuff adds up until it produces who you are today with the sad, unhappy life in the curses. See, evil, hurtful, one eye, bad, unkind. Notice this, vicious in disposition. Vicious in disposition. Now, I've come across my fair share of Hebrew Israelites who are vicious in disposition, right? Now, is that to say that they're a bad person because they got bad genes and, you know, they, they just, <laughs> quote unquote, bad luck? right? They just born bad. No, it's not to say that at all. Why? Because they're born into the curses. And when uh, a child or even an adult experiences all of this uh, trauma, let's just use an umbrella term trauma, it creates personality problems. For example, you have a lot of people, especially on YouTube, who are narcissists. Right, they can't get along with anybody, and everybody uh, has to serve them. And they're basically oppressive type of people and manipulative type of people who will get other people to do their dirty work. Right, stir up trouble by getting other people to dislike somebody and then attack that person, or the bipolar type person, bipolar type personality. Right. A lot of that and a lot of other psychological or mental health issues amongst uh, uh, not only people in, in the United States, right? Melanated people in the United States, but all over the world. But then within that group of melanated people, we have the house of Yasharala, right? So all of these people are, me too, severely traumatized from, from childhood up, it's rare that we're not going to be traumatized and therefore likely to suffer from borderline personality disorder, bipolar personality disorder, narcissism, schizophrenia, especially uh, early onset schizophrenia, all of these different types of uh, uh, problems that come from what? Mm. People being verbally abused, physically abused, emotionally abused, sexually abused. In other words, people who are dishonorable, right? That, that's, a, that's another good term to use. Growing up in a dishonor, amongst dishonorable parents, siblings, and a community, okay? So it produces this unhappy, sad, unpleasant, evil life where people become disagreeable, selfish, and self-centered, and what vicious and dis position. Now you see a lot of this viciousness on YouTube and Facebook where people attack each other over no reason, really, right? They don't like what you teach. Or they don't, maybe they're even jealous of you or envious of you, right? There's no reason to attack anybody, especially publicly, right? Especially publicly. So viciousness and disposition, we see that amongst the house of Yasharala. Uh, to the extreme, bad, evil, wicked, ethically. I'm sure everybody <clears throat> who hears this video has come across some 
wicked uh, Yasharala people, people who have uh, done some ethic ethically <laughs> terrible things to you. In our case, the ethics would be what? The standard would be what? The most highest instructions, right? They know it, they don't do it, or they make up some excuse to justify, right? An alibi, so on and so forth. They are wicked, okay? In general, so let's move on to 1J1. In general, persons of thoughts, right? Deeds and actions, evil, distress, misery, injury, injury, calamity, evil, distress, adversity, wrong, and we've gone through the rest of those. So the most high is telling us what here? He's saying, hey, you can live a long, I'm offering you a long life and extreme riches, extreme wealth, extreme everything that's good, right? Emotionally and physically, or what? Death and dying and suffering, right? And suffering dealing with people who are evil, who are, who are vicious, okay? So let's go back and read it again. I really, really like the way this reads. I, I wanna go through this again, y'all. Now, I call the sky and the earth to be witnesses that I am offering you this choice. See, I'm offering you a choice at the most high. Will you, see, this is a question. I'm offering you a choice, but what are you gonna do? Will you choose for the most high to make you prosperous and give you a long life? So what does this mean? Do you trust the, that the most high, do you trust that if you follow his instructions, he will make you prosperous to the extreme? Do you trust that, right? Do you trust it? Because if you don't trust it, surely when it comes down to it and you have to make some type of decision and you don't trust the most high, right? You are not going to follow his instructions. Uh, people who don't trust will make an alibi, an excuse. They'll rationalize, well, because of this and so and so and so and so, and then they don't do it, right? Or will you put I'm sorry, or will he put you under a curse and kill you? See, there's only two choices <laughs> and there's no escape. There's no escape. If you are an ascendant of the house of Yasharala, you are bound to the contract. You cannot get out. It's either life and prosperity, meaning that you're going to follow the most high's instructions or you're not and you're going to live a hard, unhappy life, right? Because the Most High is saying here, he's going to what? Put you under a curse and kill you. Put you under a curse and kill you, right? So no two questions, of, no, no, there's no other way to look at that, right? Okay, so I think that's gonna wrap it up, everybody, let's see. If there's anything I wanted this else to oh oh yeah but very importantly um, be a little bit patient when we just have a few uh, maybe a couple more minutes to go okay um, verse sixteen for I command you today to love the Most High your power and walk in obedience to Him and keep His commands decrees and law so let's look at this word keep if I can find it real quick let's look at keep. I think it's, uh, I don't know if they're trans, oh, okay. So Strong's number 8104. Notice what it says. It says to keep, guard, observe, give heed. So now there's a, a, a one, more, one more meaning I wanna take a look at. So let's look at the meaning of guard. Let's look at the meaning of guard. <clears throat> so as a verb, it means what? Watch over in order to protect and control. So those of you who have been 
or who are current scholars or past scholars, you will remember from Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says that we need to be careful to do all that the Most High uh, has instructed us. So being careful means what? Act in a way that you intentionally avoid harm and intentionally avoid error. So now we see how this relates to guard, right? Watch over in order to protect and control, right? This is a nuance. Protect, so let's look at similar words. Protect, look after, keep an eye on, patrol, police, defend, shield, safeguard, take care of, preserve. Now, how can you do these things if you do not know what the Most High's instructions are? If you do not know, that means that you have not studied what these things mean Hebraically. If you're not coming, I don't know of any other uh, educational institution other than Zion Law School that's teaching this at the uh, level of, uh, of uh, complexity that we teach it. I'm not saying that there are not, I'm just not aware. The question is, if you do not know what the Hebraic meaning or what the instructions mean in the original language, you are trusting on what you know in English. I can assure you that what you have learned in English does not reflect what is said in the original agria, okay? It is not the same. There are a lot of things that are different, okay? Materially different. So you absolutely must learn what these instructions are, what the Most High's instructions are that he gave to Moses, <clears throat> okay? Don't rely on the English because it's not the same, okay? And you will be uh, in error, okay? And it's too important to just, uh, the, the, the uh, consequences are too extreme to just not do anything, okay? You saw it yourself. Uh, if you don't follow the instructions, you get death and dying and a very, very unhappy life and dealing with wicked people, okay? You'll be uh, always the loser, all right? So now let's look at uh, uh, two, protect against damage or harm, okay? So you can't do that if you don't know what they are. And if you don't know how to, how to use the language, you can't protect and you can't, uh, there's nothing you can do because you don't have any information, you don't have any knowledge or skill. So as a noun, a guard is what? A person who keeps watch, okay? So let's go back to, uh, where is it at? I want, there's something, there. okay, here we are. Strong's 8104. Notice it says in 1A1, it says to keep, have charge of. Keep, have charge of, okay? 1A2 to keep guard, keep watch and ward. Okay, keep watch and ward. Keep watch and ward. All right. Ward, verb, protect. Okay, protect. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, there's another, oh, keep watch, keep watch. That's the other one I wanted to look at. Where is it? Keep watch. And I'm sorry, to, to have charge of. So what does it mean to have charge of? This is a nuance. Uh, what does it, okay, to have, let's look at it. Uh, I want y'all to see something. have charge of. All right, okay. Uh, let's see here. Okay, demand. So to, a charge is a demand, okay? As a price for someone for a service. This is not what I'm looking for. Hold on, that's not it. Um,
have charge of, for example, you're in control, you're in charge or in control, right? Control me was exact. Q so much. No. I don't like any of these definitions. All right. So maybe we can get it from a different source. To have charge over something means what? Oh, okay. So here, here, here's a nuance of it, right? What does it mean to have charge over someone? Or what does it mean to have charge over something, as in the most highest instructions? Okay, so let's read this. When the police charge someone, they formally accuse them of having done something illegal. To charge a battery means to pass. Oh, no. Okay, and that doesn't. Hold on, y'all. What is correct? Let's see. Let's, oh. Oh, wow. Well. Maybe we're not going to get it. We're going to take charge of and charge of. Okay. Oh, I just saw it. All right. So this is a nuance. Okay. If you are in charge, you have control over someone or something and are responsible for them. Y'all see that? You have control over and you're responsible. See, have charge of. You have control over and have uh, charge of your responsible what? Of these instructions. So you have to know these, right? You're responsible, not only to yourself before the most high in this contract, right? Your performance of the contract, but also to who? Your children and to who else? Your brothers and sisters in the family and in the nation, right? because you have to deal with the house of Yasharala according to the most high's instructions. So you are in charge and you are in control over these instructions, which means what? You need to learn what they mean Hebraically. You should learn your Ibriyath national language, which is the ancient Hebrew that our ancestors spoke. You should be able to handle these uh, uh, these verses, right, in the original language. Why? Because you're supposed to have control over them. You're supposed to be in charge. You're supposed to be able to render a verse the way you want to render. And in the classes uh, that I teach, uh, right now I'm teaching the Curses, curses course uh, every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everybody's learning how to do this, how to translate and how to render. See, you're in charge. You are in charge of it. So you need to make your own. You should be able to make your own translation, okay, of these verses, right? Because you are in charge, okay? And what I try to do, not what I try to do, what I do is teach you the skills that you need in order to be able to follow the most highest instructions, to be independent, not dependent on pastor, general, teacher, rabbi, or anything like that. So let me go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, verse 17, oh no, uh, verse 16, okay. For I command you today to love the most high your power, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commandments, decrees and laws, then you will live and increase. So there's life and extreme prosperity, right? And the most high your power will bless you. Now go back and do this on yourself. You're gonna see that this means kneel before you, okay? If you wanna know specifically what this means, come to class uh, Saturdays, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and we'll go through this, I'll teach you. The most high will bless you in the land you're entering to possess the land you are entering to possess. Now, when we return to the Most High and He takes the curses off of us, we are then what? Again, we will be what? Entering into our land to possess it again. Okay. 
So this just did not have to do with when our ancestors entered into the promised land. This has to do with us also, and I'll prove it to you. Well, come to class and I'll prove it to you. Let's, let's, let's wrap this video up. Um, 17, but if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, in other words, you do not follow the most highest instructions. Okay, that takes us back to here, right? Will you choose for the most high to make you prosperous or will you, or will he put you to death? Will he curse you and put you to death? Okay, that's what that is. Let's go back. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Okay, then the Most High will bless you. And okay, here we are. But if your heart turns away from the Most High and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other powers and worship them, worship is what? Any type of service, any type of effort you put in. Okay, any type of effort you put in in a ceremony, directly or indirectly, knowing or unknowing. Okay, I declare to you this day, I'm announcing to you this day, you will certainly what? Be destroyed. Death by violence, dying, right? And a miserable, unhappy life where you have to deal with dishonorable, vicious people. Okay, everybody's dishonorable and vicious around you. You will not live long in the land, uh, you are crossing uh, the Jordan to enter into and uh, possess. Verse 19, this day, I'm gonna read it again from here. I like it so much. Contemporary English version. Now I call the sky and the earth to be witnesses that I am offering you this choice. Now y'all notice that in other versions of the Bible that it says something like here, I call the heavens and the earth uh, a witness against you. See, against you. That's like the Most High wants to punish you, doesn't it? When, when they translate that way, I call the heavens and the earth against you. I don't like that because the Most High wants us to what? He wants to give us an extremely happy, prosperous, long life, which here is better rendering in my opinion. Now I call the sky and the earth to be witnesses that I am offering you this choice. So let me ask you who are listening, whatever your name is, will you choose for the most high to make you prosperous and give you a long life? See, will you choose by following his instructions? Or I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, if you hear me, I'm talking to you, I'm asking you, or will the Most High put you under a curse and kill you? Choose life. Shalawama, I'm Dr. Yasafa with Zion Law School. Um, you're invited to come to the Saturday morning class at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Choose life, Shalawama.